Hello again, your host Jason here, and thanks for tuning in to All Access Pass. Today we have a very special guest. Well, I mean, every day we have a special guest with us. Today is certainly no exception. Coming all the way from the streets of Brooklyn to being what he is today. You know him, you love him. Put those hands together. Please welcome the one and only, Little Anthony. I love, I, is this on? You're on, you're on. Okay. I love shaking his hand. He's, he's so youthful. <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. It's See, contagious out here. So. <laughs> well, first and foremost, thank you very much for being here, sir. We appreciate thank you, it. Jason, thank you very much. We do, My we pleasure. do. Obviously, you have some adoring and loving fans out in that audience right there. And uh, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to introduce you to a young lady we have on board who is affectionately and ship wide known as the Chocolate Diva. And uh, oh, yeah, Chocolate. Chocolate Diva's in the building. Really? And she has, she's got your book, and so we'll, we'll do that yes. in a minute. But okay. uh, before we get into that, as I said, thank you for being here. What's it like being on the Malt Shop Memories Cruise with all your well, fans? You know, this is my third, I think. I know, I know, yeah. yeah okay. uh, and uh, Time Life has been so, so nice to me. Of course, we do, I don't know if you guys saw the infomercials that, that, mm -hmm. that I do. And they've just been marvelous. So yeah. coming on the cruise is pretty cool. And you know, and I noticed that it, there are a lot of repeaters. Oh, yeah. Right? oh yeah. I see a lot oh, of yeah. people I saw uh, two years ago, three years ago, and it's amazing that it's grown like this, mm -hmm. where it reaches people to the point that they want to come again and again and again, and it makes me feel good because what happens is I become friends with people, so sure. it makes my gig a lot easier when I go on stage. Sure. You know, it's not like I'm performing for the, uh, just this audience just walked in. Yeah, it's like performing for your family, your friends, sure. and stuff like that. The reception alone, when you walk out on the stage and everyone already knows you and loves you, I mean, it, you know, it well, makes yeah, that first ten minutes easy. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. You're walking around the ship and everything, and I'm just like the rest of you guys. Have been the tours I go on them. I went to that beach. Half Moon Key. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a beautiful beach. Yeah. Did anybody go there? Yeah. Oh my goodness, the water was so pristine. Oh yeah, it's you know? beautiful. It was really great. I know, at Holland America Line, actually the company, uh, that's their private beach, so. Yeah, and a lot of ships have them, yep. and then they're okay, but I, I, I'm, I'm putting a plug in, I ain't getting a dime for this, but that's the best. No, he's not. That's the best private beach I've been on, and I've been doing ships since the early 80s. Oh. That's a few ships. So, so tell me a little bit, what's it like growing up in Brooklyn, becoming a star? T tell me about the early days, what's Ooh. it like? Brooklyn was, you know, when I was coming up in Brooklyn, you didn't know you was in Brooklyn, but you was in Brooklyn, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, it's, it's a unique place, as we were talking yep. back there. Um, Brooklynites, um, the, 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 somebody said that we were part like island people, people live on islands. Yep. So they, they always consider themselves to be entirely different from the rest of New York City, New York City or the other boroughs. Mm -hmm. You know, like we look down on people, I hope there's nobody here from the Bronx. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but <laughs> Sorry about it. Sorry about it. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, we don't like Queens and stuff. And then we would, we would have that attitude, Staten Island says, that doesn't belong to us in the, in the five boroughs, it belongs to Jersey. <laughs> It does. Pass it off. Yeah, but, but coming up in Brooklyn, as I got older, then I realized there was something about this place that was unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, from Brighton Beach on, wherever you go, it, and, and like to this day, I always, when I go to New York, I try to get to two places that are very important to me. One is Junior's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and the other is Coney Island, because I like Nathan Hot Dogs and all the junk <laughs> they got there. So basically, you're a tourist, is what oh, you're saying. Oh, make that yeah. three. Yeah, yeah, tourist. <laughs> make, that, make that four. Pizzas and a deli. It's hard to find a decent deli in it. Mm. Yeah. You get in Brooklyn. And now that you've done the food tour, how'd you get into music? Uh, <laughs> who wants to talk about music? <laughs> now, you know, as a kid, you're coming up, and, and in those days, they had a lot of singing groups going on. It was called R&B, rhythm and blues mm -hmm. groups, like the Flamingos, 
the Dells, um, Moon Glows, and Orioles, and all that stuff. And, and that was what you, Hank Ballot and the Midnighters, and that's what you heard. And, and, it, and I was already a singer uh, from the age of three on, and I used to sing, uh, well, I didn't sing with my mother, but my mother was a gospel singer. And she sang with the Nazareth Baptist gospel singers for years. So I got to know a lot of people in the, in the, in the um, gospel world, too, as well. And so I was always exposed to music. My dad was a jazz musician. He played alto tenor sax. He played for Buddy Johnson's orchestra. All three of my brothers were very talented. One of them was more talented than anybody in the family. For some reason, I'm the one that broke out, but he never, he never hit. He never made it. You know? Was he a singer as well? He, singer? he sang, he composed, and taught himself how to compose. Taught himself how self, to self taught, yeah. Un older brother or younger brother? Uh, he's the, well, I'm the youngest, so, so that he's the one older. next to me, yeah. Donald. I saw you, you doing the math. Yeah. yeah. I'm the youngest, so <laughs> you're older. Got it. Uh, and did you guys do anything as a family? Any performance? Well, you know, you went out, you went on, you know. You, the biggest thing for me, I had three aunts. And one was called Aunt Bessie, Aunt Shorty, Aunt Sarah. These people were very influential in my life, extremely. Now, actually, i got to tell you this. I got a book out, you know, so it's, it's more in detail. Yeah, it's in somebody the got it right, right there. there yeah. It's more detailed about really where I came from, what I did, and I know we're limited in time, we're so okay. I can't spend a lot of time on that, but the fact is that, um, yeah, um, we did a lot of things. We, I, I don't know if people remember, they used to have um, those boat rides on the Hudson River, and they had the boat called the Peter Stuyvesant, <laughs> and you'd go up to Bear Mountain. That was like going to another country to me as a kid. <laughs> So we did all that kind of stuff. We went on picnics, we went this place, we went that. And we lived at a time when everybody in your family lived basically in the same area. Uh, I had people in the Bronx, my Aunt Naomi. I had people in Queens, which is too bad, but I did. Um, <laughs> for you or for Queens? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I would no more than that now and good. But anyway, um, we had relatives in New York City mm -hmm. and Harlem. So every Sunday we would get together, as I can remember as a kid, and we'd have these Sunday, Sunday dinners. And we have like 12, 13, 14 people around that, that table, you know? And you'd always have the church reverend, he'd always come over, he'd show up for Sunday. That's right, Sunday dinner, man. Sunday dinner. Every Sunday. <laughs> And so we had that kind of an experience in those days, Jason. Um, it, was, it was close. I mean, all my relatives, we were, we were all close. Now today, it's all nuclear, man. We're all over the place. I got a son in Seattle. My, uh, my great-grandchildren are in Orlando, Florida. Uh, where say, are they? All over the place. Did you say great-grandchildren? Yes. You got great-grandkids. Yeah, well, you see, I read the Bible and it said, go forth and multiply, and I, I took it seriously. You took that exponentially, yeah. I see. Yeah, that's... <laughs> so, what, out, of, out of the younger generations of, uh, of your tree, what are we seeing any talent, any musical uh, up-and-comers? Well, yeah, there was quite a few of them, but they never really, you know, you, you know, the thing about being talented is one thing, but having passion about something Absolutely. is another. Absolutely. So if you have a passion for something, you're going you're to succeed. But just because you can sing maybe a little bit or you can do this and that, doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be chip off the old block and you're going to go on and become somebody's kid and you know, mm. used to. It happens, like Liza Minnelli, of course, you know, and, and people sure. like that. Yeah. They, 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 they follow their parents and they become just better or greater than their parents. But in the case of my family, no, but there's several of them that sing. Quite a few of them that actually sing very good. Well, we're going to dig into that in a little bit in just a minute. Don't turn the channel. Come right back with us here at All Access Pass with the wonderful little Anthony. Yay! All right, thanks for tuning back in. Here we are once again on All Access Pass with the fabulous little Anthony. Yay! Now, we've talked a little bit about growing up in, in Brooklyn and in yeah. and, uh, and, and those days, and a little bit about your family. Tell me a little bit about Motown. What was Ooh. it like? What, well, that whole... Uh, it, I, I got hooked up with um, um, Smokey Robinson in 1959. Wow. He and Barry Gordy at that time, Barry used to work for, for um, a record company called Brunswick, I think it was. Yeah, Brunswick Record Company. But he didn't... He, actually, he wrote, he was one of the co-writers on uh, Jackie Wilson's first song, uh, 
Oh, what's the name of that? Anybody remember? Can you help me out? What was it? Um, Lo Lo Lonely Teardrops, that's Lonely right. Lonely Teardrops. Yeah. And um, job, so he did well as a writer, but then he wanted to have his own record company and stuff. And so he wasn't successful. And he ventured back to Detroit, where he's from and where Smokey is mm -hmm. from. And they both were friends. And that, and that was the beginning. The rest is history. He became Motown, how he started Tamla Records, this record, that record. And then it blew up. But that was a very, very, very powerful time in show business. And because I was already established as quote, quote, unquote, a star, mm -hmm. I was already traveling all over the place and I would go to Detroit and I hung out at Hitsville, Mo Motown, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everybody thought I was, I was actually signed to Motown and I never was. You were just hanging on. I was just hanging out with all <laughs> those guys. So I got to know them very well. Uh, you, we were talking backstage a little bit about the music scene between 55 and 65 mm -hmm. and the, just the explosion uh, yes. uh, of it. Take us a little bit into that. It was unbelievable. Um, you, you had, because uh, people always, I, I have to say this, when I talk, I talk from a historic basis because I was there. You were there. So if I tell you something, it is the absolute truth as I know it. Uh, we have categories. You got. We were R&B singers. We weren't doo-wop singers. Doo-wop singers really were kids out of New York that sang a certain way and they, you know, had doo-wop a doo do you know. But the flamingos and the moonglows, they were R&B singers, and so was I. When I was inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that's a shameless plug. Anyway, <laughs> when I was when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2009, I was in, was inducted into the Hall of Fame for rhythm and blues. Okay. So really, that's what I am. I'm a rhythm and blues singer. Now, we were saying back there earlier, you've uh, grown up in the, in the music industry so, yes. to a certain extent. You know, you, knew, you and Chubby, for instance, been friends since you were 17 years old. 17 years old. Sure did. Hey, there's some stuff I talked about. I told Chubby he's in the book, so if you want to get it, get the book. <laughs> Send the book. Send you want to get a little in-depth on Chubby Checker, buy Send, the book. Send we'll the book. Uh, some stories as to how that came about, <clears throat> how all that went down. Yeah, no, it's, it, well, you, it's how you see it. I mean, it was good, it was bad, it was in there somewhere. We, they were 17, it was all the we above, were 17, let's be honest. Yeah. We, yeah, it was quite, it, it's just an interesting time. Well, Brenda yeah. Lee, Brenda Lee, and all these little things, and there's in there. She actually wrote about me in her book. Brenda Lee? Yeah. Did she? Yeah. All good and, things? Yeah. <laughs> her management didn't think it, but she did. <laughs> Managers are good for that. Uh, so, so you know Chubby at, at 17. Have, yeah, we met. We, he actually, he, we were talking the other day, and he said, man, do you know I saw you at the Uptown Theater in Philadelphia? Yeah. Right? yeah. He said he was a kid, and he says, I remember walking in there. We're both the same age. And he, he says he walked in there, and he saw us with these white suits on and glowing gloves and all mm -hmm. that. He said it was just an inspiration to him. So I like to I like to feel like I, I gave you a career, Chubby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll talk two days time. I'll let him know. Is he, is he on the ship? He's still? on. He's oh on. gosh! Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna bump into him in the Lido line for food tomorrow. You have to explain that one. Uh, little Anthony, yes. tell us about where the name comes from. You know, that's it. That, 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 it's in the book, but I, <laughs> I'll um, I'll tell you what happened is. I have people, even on the ship, a lady came to me and says, oh, you don't look little. <laughs> and I was being facetious. I said, but you don't look as young as you used to either. Careful now. Careful yeah, was now. I meant to be uh, cynical and facetious? Yes. <laughs> no. But that name, it wasn't because of my stature or my height or anything. It was given to me by Alan Freed. Alan Freed. Yes, the, the father of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. He coined the phrase rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Um, he, uh, uh, the legend is that the record promoter came to him mm -hmm. at old WINS Winds in New York City. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, you know, they would plug their records or bring the records up to the disc jockeys. And they would decide whether they were going to play it or not sure. or whatever. And so he listened to it and he says, wow. That girl sure can sing. <laughs> <laughs> this is legend. They, they told me, the promoter said, oh no, that's not a girl. That's a guy. And he said, what's his name? He says his name is Anthony Gordine. Man, he must be very little. 
Little Anthony. He started saying it on the radio, and they had to reprint the records because originally it was the Imperials. And so they had to reprint it. Like a lot of things in those days, they used to sure. do that with like Diana Ross, the Supremes. We used to be the Supremes or Smokey Robinson, the Miracles. Mm -hmm. Then it, I mean, it was the Miracles, then it became Smokey Robinson Miracles. So they had to reprint everything. But that is how I got to name. It had nothing to do with my size. He just assumed that my voice, that kind of a voice, that sure. had to be a really little guy. So that's how I got the name. So when you say reprint, it was initially released as the Imperials. Then. Yes, and there are some people who have collectors that actually showed me the original record. Just says, says the Imperials. Imperials. And then it was re-released with Little the, Anthony. Then it the was re-released, yes. And the rest of the Imperials hated you. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, what it, yeah, Jason, what it does is, and it's hard for people to understand, yeah. and I love telling what I know is really the, the, the facets of the show, if the show business and, and the recording, it's really the, the, the nuts and bolts of what's real. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 when, once you are cut out of the herd, you, you now are not that anymore. Like in other words, the, I'm not an imperial, from 1950 I wasn't an imperial anymore. Sure. I became Little Anthony, who sung with the imperials. See, so a lot of people equate the two. Yep. But really, it's two different entities. And that was because the record people decided that's what they wanted to do. And there it was. It was. A star is born. A star is born. A star is born. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about where, where you were, how you yeah. became. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little about where, where we are now and what we're doing. Well, I have a lot of fun now. <laughs> it's funny. I'm having a lot more fun now. <laughs> I am. <laughs> At 74, I am. Because, well, with all the grandchildren, great-grandchildren, you know, and we're very close, and um, my wife Linda's here somewhere, and we, we've been together for a long time, 40 years, I believe it is. Yeah. And I just, uh, I just did a, a oh, oh, I know what I, I'm excited about. Yes, sir. I'm going into New York City mm -hmm. for the Veterans Day Parade on November, November the 11th. And I've been, been a guest to be on the, on, the, on the float with a lot of wonderful people. Oh, wonderful. I, I think I don't remember the gentleman's name. He's one of the men that they found alive in 9-11 in oh. one of the Twin Towers. He's going to be on there. He's a fireman. Great. And then uh, the, uh, the actor, Jack Scalia, they yeah, told yeah. me. A lot of veterans and things. Because I, I do a lot of work with the veterans. And, and, and I, do, I do it because my whole family it's full of veterans. You know, my three brothers was all three branches of the service. My oh. uncle fought in Tara in, in the Pacific mm -hmm. in World War II. My other uncle was involved with loading ships and stuff during World War II in San Francisco, uh, where he almost got killed. So it's a long history, they tell me, it goes all the way back to Civil War. So as a kid, when I came up, I knew I was going to go in the service. Sure. And actually was drafted. And, and, and the only reason why they didn't take me, President Kennedy had just put through a bill that was passed by Congress that if you were, had a child or you were married, you were not to be drafted anymore. And that's how I, I didn't go in the service. But I was ready to go because it was a natural thing to do sure. that. Your mm -hmm. family, that's what you did. Yeah, it, and it, if you want to know more about it, it's in, in the, the book. book. <laughs> Perfect shameless plug. We'll be back in yes. just a minute with more Little Anthony. All right, welcome back. Here we are once again with the fabulous little Anthony. So we were chatting backstage, yeah. mm -hmm. and you have some new music coming out. Yes, I do, Jason. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, I, it, it's something that I, well, George Benson and I know each other since he started out in the business I'm from Pittsburgh, and he would always say, one of these days, we got to do something together. And so the years passed by, we never did it. And he went in sort of a smooth jazz thing, and I was off in the yeah. R&B, you know, rock and roll thing. And it, recently, we just hooked up. It just came, one day ran each other, and we were talking. And we said, man, we should sing a duet together. And it just happened that I signed a record a deal with the Brother Ivor Records, mm -hmm. and I presented it to them, and they got excited about this. So we have a single coming out. November the 13th is the duet with uh, George Benson and myself. Very cool. <laughs> When's the last time you released anything new? I don't remember. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair no. enough. It's probably in the book. It's in so the book. Read, yeah, the book. But, 
but it, you know, it, it, the, 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 you know, I had such a great run. Very blessed to have the run that I had. Mm -hmm. And uh, but one of the things is that 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 I I'm, I'm blessed about. I have people a lot of times come up to me and say, "Man, your voice, you sing just like this, and you sing like, like that, and you sing just like you used to sing." And how is that at 74 years old? What are some people? That's a gift by the way. Absolutely. That voice is not for me. It's not natural. It's supernatural. Mm -hmm. So people like Tony Bennett or mm -hmm. Melton May, there's a few of us that are blessed to be able to just, it's just there. And I know I'm not trying to, but it comes out and it's very easy and effortless to me. So I just want to make sure that people that's realize a blessing that's, for all that's a for blessing from God as far as I'm concerned. Well, I think we're all blessed. As our watchers and as our studio audience knows, and as I explained to you backstage, sir, we like to break down the fourth wall in this, in this game show here. Really? It's a game show now. Uh, we like to break down the fourth wall, and fourth we like wall. to hand out uh, some cards before the show and allow the audience members to ask a few questions. Sounds cool. I've got a couple here if you're game. Uh-huh. You up for it? <laughs> I'm here. I got you're here, it. yeah. You, got, you don't have dinner for at least four more minutes, so I got you. From Willie. Willie says, Willie. Willie says, the last time I saw you in concert was in Reno, Ooh. and you had either just had knee surgery or oh, you yeah. were about to have it. How did it go, and when was that? That's outstanding. That was 1992. Okay. Uh, right. No, no, sorry, wrong. I've lost it. 2002. Close. I'm getting mixed up with these years. Yeah, I did. I was, on, I was sitting in a chair. Performing? Yeah, I blew my knee out, this right oh. knee. And, uh, and so that was... I had to, you know, I had to perform. So I would just sit in a chair and sing. So that, yeah, that was 2002. I'd like to report that I had an operation. It was huge success. You're no good problem. to go. You know, I, I have to say, uh, and, and I think most of you in this room, you're all, all of you in this room are music fans. And whether you're a music fan of yesterday or today, Music fan is a music fan, and you start to follow along, and you probably have some hits out there today that you can identify with or still enjoy, and maybe you don't, fair enough. But at the same time, I've got to say, I have the, the, the pleasure of doing interviews with a lot of different stars from yes. a lot of different generations. Yes. And the newer the star, the less work ethic they have in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. I notice. It, it's the stars from your era. It's, yeah. it's the gods, the music gods like you that go out, you blow a knee out, and you perform on a chair. Yeah. I feel like now someone gets a hangnail and like, nah, not tonight, not tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, my toe hurts and I can't do it. So on behalf of everyone watching, thank you very much for doing what you do. You well, thank you. Such an amazing work ethic. Mm. Right. I want to say, I want to say I just met Jason and, he, and, then, and this is what the first cruise that he's doing. Yes, sir. Is, and I must say, I, this is a very nice man, y'all. Very nice <laughs> dude. Very generous of you. He's a great interviewer, and obviously he's, he's really got a lot of talent, in the, and I, I hope to be on the ship with you a few times, you know. I hope to be back, too, so that makes yeah, two that's of us. Yeah, yeah. That means we're working. We're in this, exactly. <laughs> that's step one in show business, yeah, show right, up. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you recall, this is Ed from Pittsburgh, do you yeah. recall how Tears on My Pillow and Just Two Kinds of People in the World became a two-sided hit when a Pittsburgh DJ flipped it over. That Pittsburgh DJ was po Porky Chadwick. Yeah. And um, he was the only one that did it. It kind of happened everywhere, but he was well known in Pittsburgh. And it was a two-sided hit, which was unusual, but we had it. Um, the original song that was going to be released was supposed to be Two People in the World, Just the Kinds of People in the World. But Mr. Goldner, who's the president of Gone and Records, what I was recording for, wanted to do another song that he had and um, and he said, did you did you rehearse that song? And I I, I lied, as you do. Oh sure, in show business, you don't say you know you can ride a horse. Oh yeah, I can ride a horse. I can. Yeah, all the time. I can swim all the time. Yeah, you know, I got one back at the house. You want the gig, man? <laughs> and I said, oh yeah. And I just went in the room, and he said, well, I'm gonna give you time enough to learn it. The Imperials, the guys, went in another room, and they didn't know what kind of background to put on it, and they took and st they borrowed the background from Earth Angel. The Penguins. If you listen to that Earth Angel, it's ooh, ooh, ooh. Tears of My Pillars, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> So they did their gig, and it was the first time, everything I did in those days was by memory. 
but I had no time. So I actually read Tears on the Pillow off a piece of paper. And then he's, you know, I'm, I don't want to do too, too much because it's, it's in the book. In the book. <laughs> We'll, we'll put a dot, dot, dot ellipses yeah. on that story. Yes. And then you're never going to believe what happened. It's in the book. It's in the book. Uh, gentleman from New York City here, Rich, I believe it says, forgive me, it might say Rick, I think it says Rich. Uh, little Anthony in the Imperials. Mm -hmm. Were the Chesters renamed the Imperials? Mm -hmm. And are they connected to the DuPonts? No. No. No, no. It's in the book. No. It's in the book. Well, I don't talk much about, it's mostly the Chesters, who really were the Imperials. They, their name was changed. And the DuPonts, was, I wasn't there long enough to sneeze. It was only less than nine or ten months I was with this group. And some people, because you have social media there and ways of getting information, sure. they kind of think that that was something an important time. It was not. It's, I don't even, the most important time to me was when I ran into Tracy Lord, uh, Nathaniel Rogers, Clarence Collins, Ernest Wright, wow. and, and those guys who were the Chesters, and we hooked up, and then consequently from there, the record company gave, didn't like the name, and they gave us the name the Imperials. So that's where everything wonderful happened from that point. I know that some people may consider that somehow because somebody sat down that I was with the DuPonts, that was like real hip. I gotta understand, I was 14 years old. I'm 74 years old. It's hard for me to relate to that. It's much easier for me to relate yeah. to the guys coming up and when I was 17, 18 years That's old. That's the era of Fires Burn No More. It, it, and well, well, Fires Burn No More, yeah, came before that, it, as we were the Chesters, but we really was the imp Got so it. confusing. <laughs> but, and he I, doesn't I, even know. I actually get detail. <laughs> it, it's in the book. It's, I get more detailed about that. So when you read it, I, you know, because you got time to really break it down and stuff, and we don't have a whole lot of time. So. And more importantly, he doesn't want to carry all those books home. So no, you, please. That's, that's I told lot, Jason that's a that's lot, a lot, lot of books. Yeah. Oh, uh, arms would be so one tired. last question for you before we let you get out of here, and this is just a, a, mm -hmm. a fun one. You performed with a lot of people. Yeah. You performed with, with most big names, most of the names yes. that everybody knows. Give us a couple of highlights from your career as we, uh, as we uh, sail away here on our Well, like our I said, um, I wrote it down. The people that I've been influenced me were just, I don't know, this was really different, man, because I came up with, great comedian, Red Fox, who became one of my dearest friends until he died. Um, he was like my father on the road. Moms Mabley, Ella Fitzgerald, oh. Sammy Davis, yeah. and I were good friends until the day he passed away. And um, his wife, who was, her name was Altavis, but her real name is Joni Gore, she and I went to school together. So it goes on and on. If you want to know more, it's a lot. It's in the book. <laughs> Last question for you. Last question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, we were talking a little bit about, I mentioned earlier that, you know, there is a lot of talent out there in the music yeah. industry today. And whether yeah. you, you love today's music or not, there still is a lot. Yeah. Who do you listen to today? Well, there's some artists, there are a lot that I really like. And like in our era, we had some, what they used to call them one hit wonders mm -hmm. or, or just people that was just in another kind of sphere. So it's not really different. There were good, art, good singers, good, you know, good artists, bad artists. It's not, this, it's different. Sure. It's not different, it's I actually the same. I understand. Uh, but there are a lot of people that are, that are very talented. Beyonce, I think, is one of the most hardworking, this talented young ladies I've ever seen and has the voice and really earns every dollar and every penny, and she does it. Uh, Jay-Z is unique, even though he's a rat, he's really one of those people like Tupac. Yep. They came out of, the, there's something special about some of those people, now a lot or not. But there are, there are always really talented people that come out. Uh, Christina Aguilera, she can, she can sing. As we used to say in the business, she can sing. That's not an I, that's an A. She can't sing, she can she sing. She can sing. Yeah, I know So, that. you know, um, and, and there's many, and I can stand it all day long, but um, it, 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 it is a few. But then there are some things. This is a different generation. It's a different era. It's not sure. the era we all came up with, which I like to think, Jason, was more unique than anything. And going back in that question from 1955 yep. to 65, this fits. Because that was the most creative music ever in show business. Mm -hmm. I mean, in all of music, the music, them. Because you had Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, they all were different. You have Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. <laughs> they were all stars and they sang in different uh, categories. It's not one category. And I mean, you go up and then all of a sudden you have the, the, the British Invasion, yeah. 63, 64, then you got the Beatles, then you got the Rolling Stones, then you got Motown. 
goodness grief. The creativity. Marvin Gaye was one of the most talented men I've ever, ever been around. <laughs> Sir, we could sit here and do this forever. Unfortunately, yep. we don't get the chance to. But I tell you what, for everyone watching and everyone here in the audience, don't forget that we do have the book signing before we arrive in Aruba. So make sure you come and join us. Aruba morning in the Queen's Lounge on deck number two. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for tuning in. 11 o'clock. Coach Jason, once again, Little Anthony. Thanks, Jason. Thank <laughs> you.